In the last session, we looked at creating a, uh, a new HTML skeleton, one that involves CSS and divs and uh, generally a header div, a navigation div, and then we put three divs below it. And sometimes you'll have two divs, uh, two div columns, sometimes you'll have three. But generally, most websites are going to fall within this sort of template. We can, of course, put whatever we want in these columns. Um, we can drop in uh, a footer after all of this if we want, but for right now, we're just going to start with this. Um, the first thing I want to look at, or really, I guess, the, the subject of this session, is to try to get this text, uh, this content, away from the edges of this column. You'll notice it's very, very close to the edge. It's right on the edge on both sides. So we're going to create uh, something called padding and margins that will fix some of this. Now just a real quick review. <clears throat> Here's our HTML from last week, or I'm sorry, last session, um, where we've got everything inside of a container. And within the container, we have uh, five other divs. We have a header, a nav, column one with several paragraphs in it, column two with a few paragraphs in it, and column three with a few paragraphs in it. We have the CSS to accompany that. Um, we have a container div with the same four properties we normally have. We also have a uh, header, nav, column one, two, and three, all with widths, uh, backgrounds of some sort, and floats um, on, the, on the three columns, at least. <clears throat> so we're going to pick up where we left off there. And really, we're not going to have to do any new work in the HTML this session. We're going to only do work in, this, uh, in the CSS. Now, I'm going to make a quick note. My three columns are called call1, call2, and call3 for columns 1, 2, and 3. So I'm going to pull up my CSS file, and I'll be adding a few things to column 1, 2, and 3. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, there's two ways to add space in CSS, two ways to add space around our content or our text. Uh, one is called margin and the other is called padding. Now a very quick difference between the two, uh, margin is going to add space to the outside of an object where padding will add space to the inside of an object. So margin is space on the outside, padding is space on the inside. We're going to take a look at both of these here. I'm going to add in margin 20 pixels to column 1. I'll go back out to my web browser and I can see something happen. I saw a couple of things happen actually. Uh, this shifted, first of all. Um, it moved it over what I presume to be 20 pixels. I uh, did 20 pixels on all four sides, 20 from the top the left, the right, and even down below, even though we can't really see that. I can see the background color of the container shining through there. I also noticed my third column, column three, seemed to disappear. Um, it didn't really disappear, but it, it did get shifted down quite a bit. And the reason it did this is because when we add margin or padding, either one, it adds those numbers onto the width. So if we added a 20 pixel margin, 20 on the left, 20 on the right, that's 40 extra pixels. So we have to do some math here. If we want to keep this looking the right way, I would have to decrease my width by 40 pixels. So if I'm adding 20 to the left and 20 to the right, and, and just putting the word margin here is going to do it on all four sides, I'd have to subtract 40 from this. I'd love to tell you there's a great way to just calculate that and do it automatically, but unfortunately there's not. You can whip out a calculator if you need to, um, <clears throat> or you can do the math in your head. So I'm going to try 215. I'll save and refresh this. And things look more normal than they did. I can see that there's now 20 pixels of space on the outside of this div. It's outside the div. Let's change that margin to the word padding. Padding. So instead of a 20 pixel margin, I'm going to put a 20 pixel pad in there. When I look at that in a browser, 
it adds space to the inside of this div. I can tell that because of the background color. When I see the background color in here, that tells me that this div goes out to here. I can see the actual shape of the div. There's no space outside of it. There's no margin, but there's plenty of extra space inside. The same theory applies. Whatever you put on the pad, you have to subtract from the width. So whatever uh, space, whether it's margin or padding, what you put on the left and right must be subtracted from the width. And similarly, if you do have a height, you would need to subtract the top and bottom pad off the height. So with this example, I'm predominantly going to stick with padding. Now there's several ways to write margin and padding. Uh, you might be looking at this and, and thinking like, okay, that's great if I want the same number on all four sides, but what if I don't? You know, what if, for example, I really don't want any pad at the top here? I'm pretty happy with the way that looked before. There are several ways to do this. We could write out what's called the longhand version of this. And it would look something like this. Where we could have four of these. And I'm going to put them in this order. Top, left, oh, I'm sorry, top, right, bottom, and left. And I could put a different number on each one of these. So maybe I give this a 5. Uh, the, the right and left I'm going to keep at 20 so I don't have to mess with my width. And the bottom, you know, is kind of negligible. So I, I don't really see the bottom of it anyways. But if I change the, the padding top to 5, I should see a jump here. And I do. It, it jumped up about 15 pixels. So you can put a different number on each one of these. Now, theoretically, I'm going to delete this. I don't really want to keep it, but uh, just for the sake of, of seeing it there and maybe putting it in your notes, instead of deleting it, I'm just going to comment it out. Now, a comment in code is really just a way to uh, hide your text or your code so the, the browsers don't recognize it. In CSS, the proper way to comment is slash star or asterisk. It's shift eight. And at the end of your comment, you do star slash or asterisk slash. So um, there's a slash on the outside and the asterisk or star symbol on the inside. And anything that, that goes between that is going to be commented out. So you could put these on their own lines if you want to. That way it just kind of keeps a consistent look. So you're welcome to do that. So I'll leave it there for our reference. Now, a shorter way to do this is to simply do the word padding like I had the first time. If you put one unit in there, like this, it's going to do it on all four sides. If we put four numbers in here, like so, it's going to do four sides, top, right, bottom, left. Just like I wrote up here, top, right, bottom, left. To remember the order, just do it like a clock. It uh, starts at the, the top, it starts at the 12 o'clock uh, position, and it goes clockwise all the way down. So, top, right, bottom, left. So like a clock, it's going to go in a circle, top, right, bottom, left. So in this way, I would have 5 at the top, 20 on the right, 0 at the bottom, and 20 at the left. Primarily the same as, as this, so if this were 0. You could do that. Um, so that's another way to do it. If you just want the same thing on the top and bottom and the other on left and right, you can do two digits. So for example, if I did 5 and 20, this would happen on the top and bottom. This would happen on the left and right. 5 on the top and bottom, 20 on the left and right. So it doesn't really matter which way you do it. You can put it all on one line uh, like this. Um, you can put them all on four separate lines. Whatever's easier to remember is, is completely fine. Okay, no worries. And margin is the exact same way. Just take out the word padding, replace it with the word margin, even on these up here, and uh, it'll behave the exact same way. 
Now on my column two, just for uh, reference, I'm going to do another one. I'll do padding, and I'll keep it consistent. I'm going to do five and twenty. That should do five on the top and bottom, and twenty on the left and right. I do that, and again, I see my third column disappear. That's because I didn't subtract off of the width. So if I've got 20 on the left and 20 on the right, 20 plus 20 is 40. 400 minus 40 is 360. If I do that, by decreasing my column width by 40, it allows this extra 40 to, uh, to fill up that extra space and allows my third column to, to fit in there. Do one more column. Um, I'll keep it consistent. 5 and 20. Save that. Refresh the browser. Again, it disappears. If I scroll down, I can see that I've got that padding in there. It looks like that padding is working, but it's just this container isn't wide enough to contain it all. If you start adding the widths of all three of these and the pads, it, it can't fit side by side by side unless I start decreasing something. So 300 minus 40 is going to be 260. Hopefully I'm doing my math right. Looks like I am. Everything starts to fit. So this is a way that you can start to really clean up the content. Um, even if you're putting in dummy text like this lorem ipsum, you've still got uh, plenty of room in here to, to put some space around it and, and just to be able to see exactly what it's going to look like in its finished state. Now you can, of course, keep adding things to the columns. Uh, if you wanted to add font items or more backgrounds or, or whatnot, you could still do that. But uh, margins and padding really help with the idea of space. So uh, hopefully this helps out on your projects, and, uh, and you can certainly use this in the future.